Hi everyone, as Alex said, this is Terry, and I'm excited to join you today as we talk about searching tips and tricks from within Bullhorn. Now, especially if you've been using Bullhorn for a long or long time, or perhaps you just had a migration, the amount of records you have in your database may feel a little overwhelming. You might think, how can I possibly find anything in this abyss? But fear not, because this webinar today, we are going to cover how we can locate specific records in our database using the Fast Find. We're also going to take a look how we can perform keyword searches, field-based searches, and even Boolean structured searches to find records that match our criteria in the system. And in addition to that, we're going to identify after we created our search and looking at our search results, how we can organize that list in front of us. As we head into Bullhorn, the main thing I want to talk about, of course, searching. The first thing to highlight, however, is going to be the Fast Find functionality. Now, the Fast Find, this is going to be most useful to you when you're wanting to look for one specific record or a small group of records that are related, rather than creating a full search of your database for a list of candidates or contacts based on a wide range of criteria. We're going to take a look at that in the later part of this session. Today, when we want to quickly search for one in particular record, the Fast Find is going to be the best location for us. So as an example, let's say that we have a check-in phone call in five minutes with our contact, Sylvia Watt, about some of the candidate resumes we recently sent her way. Now, we're supposed to call her. However, I have no idea what her phone number is. Since I do know her name, what I can do is simply pull up her record just as I type in the first few initials of her first and last name. Notice as I start to type in the name, I can see both her contact and her job appear here. I see the job because Sylvia is identified as the contact for that job. So when you type in the name, you see not just their name, but you also see their associated records. Here's a prime example. Now, if I just wanted to open one of these records, all I have to do is select that value. I can see right here in that drop-down Sylvia's phone number already. All right, so I don't even have to open up a record to give her a call. The phone number is right there for me. However, in this particular case, I want to make sure I review all the contents of her record and the job record in order to prepare for that call. What I'm going to do, instead of selecting either of these records, right where my cursor is, after typing in her name, I'm going to hit Enter. And this is going to take me to a Fast Find results list where I can still see those same results broken out by their entity. By selecting the record, it's then going to open as the profile, and it's going to also store here on the left-hand navigation side for me. So I can have both her contact, and I can toggle between that and the job view here. Okay. Now, through these profiles, it allows us to see all the contents as it relates to those individual records. For the job, I can see the workflow information, how many people have been submitted, how many people were sent to Sylvia. And I can use these as a shortcut to navigate from within the profiles. In addition to that, in Sylvia's profile, I can take a similar action. Take a look at the activity tied to the jobs that she's identified as the owner of. Okay. When we create a fast find, we can see the results within that dropdown available to us. Or when I hit enter and I'm looking at the fast find results list, I can quickly jump into the profiles just like I had. The column layout through the fast find results, if you're an administrator, you can define what columns appear here in this fast find results list. Okay. Getting into the profiles makes it easier for me to speak with her when we're talking about a particular job that we need to follow up and discuss. Okay, so those profiles are going to be definitely beneficial for us. When running a fast find, we can search on more than just the name. We can search on multiple other values. As an example, let's consider an alternate scenario. Say our phone has a missed call without a voicemail. Or by chance we receive a text message, but we don't recognize the phone number. So instead of calling this unknown number back or sending that awkward who is this text message reply, we can quickly use the fast find to search 
for that number and see if anyone pops up. So as I start typing in this, this missed call, notice as these values appear for me here through this dropdown. Now through this dropdown, I can see that the phone number belongs to Richard Joyce, one of our candidates. But because the faster find searches across all entities, I can see his old lead record appears here as well. I'm going to dive into his candidate record. Reviewing his record, I can now follow up with him in confidence. Now, I can also search for records using this faster find by not just name and phone, but take note, you can use the fast find to search for email address, ID number, and also too, other variations of the name, not just the first two initials of the first and last name as I highlighted. I will tell you, should you have that information, the first two initials of each, it makes it a lot easier for you to quickly pull up a record. A couple other examples of the fast find is being able to search by partial name, just the first name or just the last name. Notice here, if I were to simply just type in the name John, notice my results. The results that it provides me, leads, contacts, candidates, but notice I have Michaela Johnson, Mary Johnson, Elton John, Jay John, Luke John, and you might think, well, John's the first name. Why don't I see results with John as that first name? So let me tell you, when you do a fast find search for one value, that is looking specifically at the last name. In order to search, just by the first name. Maybe you think I have that first name, but the last name has that silent G somewhere and I'm not quite sure where. Well, typing in the first name, what you want to do immediately after that is place the asterisk symbol behind it. And notice how that list of results alters for me. I go from Mary Johnson to John Smith, John Blake, John Walsh. Okay, still broken out into the entity so we can still see those values reflected. Now remember when I said, if you do have the first few initials of that first and last name, search by that. So boom, right in the drop down, you can select it, go right to that record. But if I created a search for John and I'm looking through this list and I see, okay, I want to find John. Oh, well, the John I'm looking for is in here. I have John Davis, John Wayne. I just have a handful per entity because the system is offering you suggestions based off the values that you have entered. So if I think, well, none of those Johns are in my list, what you can do is after entering that value, again, hit that enter key on your keyboard. This brings you to your fast find results list, and I mentioned it still breaks it out by entity for you. But the other reason why I wanted to bring you here is because you can expand out your fast find results to 50, to find up to 50 records per entity that match that criteria you've entered. So you can see the idea, if I were to type in John Sawyer, how typing in the first few initials of the first and last name gets me to that value much quicker, rather than me having to scroll and scroll and scroll just to find that value. Now, if you don't have the first and last name, those tips will be helpful. If you do have both values, enter them both in so you can get to that record right away. So those are the tips I like to provide within the fast find. Now I want you to note, however, that the faster find results do not bring back any archived records. Additionally, searching by ID number is the only way to bring up jobs that are closed. All other fast find searches for jobs will only include those that are open. So keep that in mind as you're using that fast find to pull up your records, as long as they're open, you're gonna see them in your results. All right, so key thing to take away, doing the fast find search, enter the first few initials of each. If you want to search just by last name, enter the last name. But if you want to search just by first name, place the asterisk right behind it, and that'll alter your criteria. Now let's take a look at the more robust search functionality available in Bullhorn. That's going to be from within our entity list views. As we head into the menu slide out, you've noticed these circular icons, and these are what we refer to as our entities, as you know, which take us to search and list view for existing records in the system. 
Now, as you've noticed too, the structure of these lists, they all look and feel the same. The flexibility is the same as well. When it comes to searching, all right, the Bullhorn candidate searching tools we're going to view here today, it was built to assist us with increasing our sourcing productivity and saves us time and energy by allowing us to work with suggested keywords that I'll highlight. In addition to that, we can save our search criteria by marking it as a favorite. And also, too, we're going to be able to save time with this suggested keywords feature I mentioned because it automatically creates um, keywords we can incorporate into our search. So without further ado, let's dive on in. As I mentioned earlier, we can create keyword searches. And in fact, we have two forms of keyword searching advanced and basic. Now, the view that we are in, specifically when we place our cursor in that search window, it expands this window for us. And that's where we provided the keyword search options, as well as the option to add additional criteria. Well, focusing on keywords, I mentioned there's two options, advanced and basic. The view I'm in right now is advanced. And I can tell that by one of two ways. The bottom right says switch to basic, which tells me I'm currently here in advanced. Also, the advanced view has this magnifying glass here for us. And when we hover our mouse over that magnifying glass, the system tells us exactly where those keywords are looking. You want to become very familiar with where those keywords are looking, because if there's any other value not identified in this location, we're going to want to add as additional criteria. We'll talk about that additional criteria here in a moment. As we highlight those keywords, advanced versus basic, yet again, advanced allows for Boolean structured searching. So with that Boolean structured searching, if you're familiar, it allows us to include operators in between keywords, ands or ors as an example. Notice as I type in HTML and Java. Our phrase operators do not need to be capitalized, but this helps us identify the keywords we need to include in our Boolean string. Now again, advanced will allow for ands and ors or even nots. You know, do not include this word. And we'll even talk about some special characters. So advanced allows for Boolean structure. The basic view, if I hit switch to basic, notice the keywords I entered in advanced are visible here in basic. They communicate with one another. You do not have to build your keywords in advance in order to see them in basic. You can enter your keywords here. As an example, if I type in project manager, one rule of thumb in entering a keyword search in basic, always hit the enter key. Because notice how it adds that gray backing to that keyword, meaning it's going to include it into my search. Okay, If you don't hit that enter key in basic, it's going to exclude. So be sure to keep that in mind. Okay. Now, I was talking about in creating these keyword searches, the basic view allows for required, optional, and excluded. It, it um, complements, essentially, that Boolean structure from the advanced. Required, think of as your ands, your required keywords, your must-haves. Optional, think of as or. And excluded, your nots. We don't want that keyword showing up in our results at all. When I switch from advanced to basic, you might have noticed both my keywords were sitting here under required for HTML and Java. That's because I typed and in between each of them. Okay, so think of your required as your ands, optional as your ors, and excluded as your nots. Okay. Excellent. Now, in addition to that, as we've entered in keywords, I mentioned this feature called suggested keywords. So notice right below we have this little arrow where we can expand out. All right. Now, the suggested keywords feature, notice we have a few populated here. It learns word associations over time based on the searching habits of ourselves and our coworkers. This allows the more novice recruiters at your company to develop and strengthen their searching skills by learning from those with more experience. As you find a keyword here that you want to include in your search, all you have to do is simply drag and drop that value and determine, is that keyword optional, required, or is it excluded? Okay. 
Okay. You'll find that as I switch to advanced, the keywords I entered in basic are visible here because again, they communicate with one another. And I mentioned that the advanced view, I use the word bully in a time or two. Well, because we can use the ands and ors and nots to separate our keywords, I also mentioned it accommodates for special characters. So alongside the and or option, notice when I come back to basic, uh, advanced, I can see that and and or is removed. Okay, so although it does accommodate for ands and ors, it also accommodates for special characters. The characters include the plus sign before the keyword if it is required, nothing before it if it is optional, and then the minus sign if it is excluded. But there's one additional character I want to introduce you to, and that is the asterisk symbol. Now the asterisk symbol, this allows us to build off of a base of a keyword. For example, if I type in the word manage and I use that asterisk right behind it, what that's going to allow me to do is create a search and find candidates that have experience with maybe management, managerial, maybe they managed a group of people. So rather than me typing in every variation of that keyword, that asterisk is going to help me do the job. Okay, it's going to assist me. So it's going to save you a little bit of time. So keep in mind that asterisk. It works on a single keyword value. So manage, product, as an example. Okay, the Boolean searching is a technique you can use within Bullhorn and on sites as you may have noticed like LinkedIn and Monster. And while it's certainly not a requirement to know Bullhorn, uh, to know Boolean to use Bullhorn, within these search tools, as we saw, the basic view is a great way where we can quickly identify is this keyword required, optional, or excluded. In a follow-up email to this webinar, we will send you an article that explains Boolean in some additional detail. So you'll have it right at your fingertips. Now if I try to hit search right now, I want to identify that through the advanced view, I highlighted that magnifying glass to tell me where are those keywords looking. But what I didn't tell you is you actually get another choice. You get two locations to choose where they search. So keep in mind this area, it looks at the current company, the title, resume and attachments. But I bring it up again because this basic view has a checkbox here that says only search description. And when this checkbox is selected, it's ignoring all the areas in that magnifying glass. What it's going to do, it's going to ignore the areas in that magnifying glass, but it's going to look for these keywords in the candidates current active resume, okay, the resume that was parsed in, okay, so that way you can choose all those areas in the magnifying glass or simply look at the resume. Now that I've decided where I wanted to search, I hit the search button and by looking at our results, I can tell how many results appear in any list by using the top left hand checkbox on the screen. All right, I got 31 matching candidates that match the criteria that I've just entered in my search. Okay, now keep in mind, you can always save your search criteria, of course, by marking it as a favorite in Bullhorn and saving out for later use. All right, so don't forget about our favorites functionality. Now I want to highlight searching in another light. I'm going to return back to that job I had pulled up earlier. That conversation I had earlier with Sylvia went pretty well, but she wants me to kind of pick up the pace a little bit and fill this job as soon as possible. Now, did you know that you can launch a candidate search based on the terms contained in a job description? Oh yeah, it's possible. How we can do that is right here in our job profile. What we're going to find is in the job profile, we're going to use the select an action drop down. And through this location, there's a value called find matching candidates. Now what we're going to notice is that it takes us back into the candidate list and notice here, it creates its search based off the keywords that were identified in the job description. 
Now, once Bullhorn identifies those keywords, it just open up the search, and it's going to pull a maximum of 10 keywords specifically from that description. Um, in fact, it is a combination of terms taken directly from the job description, as well as related terms similar to that suggested keywords feature I highlighted on that the search page earlier. Okay. Now, I already had my candidate list pulled up, so this simply overwrote the search I previously created. Now, I know we're getting excited here, but while the Find Matching Candidates feature is a great tool to get you started, note that it shouldn't be replaced, and it likely still needs a bit of a human touch. So don't replace your search capabilities with this Find Matching Candidates. Now, for example, we might find that the search didn't include the job location, rate detail, employment type. Okay, so we need to add, like I mentioned, a bit of that human touch. Another thing I want to identify, too, is notice the keywords, they all get pulled into that optional location, okay, are ORs. So we're saying show us candidates with experience in design or customer service or payroll. So as this begins the process for me, maybe I've identified, you know what, I want to make sure that uh, construction and uh, design are included as the required keywords. I don't exactly need risk or build. Okay, so you can still build out your search and identify the specifics of what do we all want included? Where do we want those keywords, the must-haves or the optionals? Now also too, I mentioned, hey, you know what? It didn't carry over like the location or status or things like that. So as we identified where our keywords are looking, we may want to build onto our search by adding additional criteria. And when we use that add field to search, it pulls up a dropdown for us to identify fields in and about that candidate record that we can build our search on. So with this job being located in Boston, well, I want to generate a location search by using this address option. And using that address, I can create a radius search between 5 and 100 miles of a given area. So if I did 10 miles from Boston. In addition to that, I wanted to find candidates that are currently available. So I probably want to incorporate status into this search. When I hit add field to search, I'm going to pull up the value of status. Notice the type of head search functionality in finding these values. And I want to find candidates that are either new lead or active. Now a quick item about these phrase operators here. Okay, when you add additional criteria, it goes in the format of field, phrase operator, and values. Well, in phrase operators, you're going to see these three common options, exclude. So if I wanted to exclude candidates in a given status, say, if we find candidates in these statuses, don't pull them up in my results list. But there's two include options, include all and include any. These are going to be very relevant for you, especially when it comes down to these one-value fields. And we create a, if we create a search, especially with status, okay, an individual candidate cannot be two statuses at once. They're either new lead or active. Well, with this phrase operator, I'm telling the system, show me individual candidates that are either new lead and active. So include all, show me candidates that are new lead and active. Well, I won't get any results that way. I want to change this to include any, which works like an or. So I'm saying show me candidates that are either new lead or active. So always consider your phrase operators. As we hit that search option, use the checkbox at the top left to see how many results appear in our search. In looking at your results list, of course, you can always take action from within your list by adding and removing columns too. After creating your search, I think, oh, I have the full name and first and last. Do I need all those values? Maybe not. I can add and remove columns simply by heading to the columns dropdown and adjusting my view. If I have the full name, I can remove that first and last. Cleans up my view a little bit. And when I add and remove columns, drag and drop, my columns are sticky. They stay in place, so I want to organize them again. And in addition to that, your layout is not affecting anyone else. It's just your login. So you have full flexibility here.
We can also, too, view details regarding our candidates and our records using the slide out information. And notice your keywords are highlighted in the resume. Mass actions are also available in your list. Let me make my way back there. Mass actions are also available in your list. You'll find that after you create a search, by selecting one or more checkbox, a blue selected button becomes visible for you, where you can take actions to create a submission, create a call list, or even create a mass email. All right. Excellent. In this webinar today, we had covered how we can locate specific records in our database using the faster find. We identified how we can perform keyword searches, field-based, and Boolean searches to find records matching our criteria. And we also got a glimpse into how we can organize our search results by adding and removing those columns, simply from the columns drop-down. Now, before we go into Q&A, I just want to highlight a word about Engage, our annual user conference, which will be here before you know it. It's a blast. Be sure to make sure you sign up. Okay. Now, um, for more searching tips and tricks to insights on trends shaping the staffing industry, Engage 2017, it's going to offer plenty of opportunities to both learn, network, and have fun. Prices won't be lower than they are right now, so be sure to register today. You can hop on into engage.bullhorn.com for more information. With a few minutes left here, let's go ahead and dive into additional questions. Thank you, Terry. We had a lot of great questions come in, so we're going to try to cover as many as we can right now. The first question came in from Linda asking, do phone numbers need to be formatted in a certain way in order to search? So with the phone numbers, you mean um, essentially with the hyphens or formatted with, you know, periods, spacings, things like that? Yes, exactly. All right. So what you can do is I would recommend that you do format them in a way. Uh, however, that is not something that is specifically required. So as an example, when you have the hyphens pulled up, you know, like I have here, let me pull up Matthew. The hyphens are there, but I can simply just type in the number without the hyphens and it will reflect the uh, result for me. Great, thank you. We have a question that just came in from Melinda asking, how do I, or do you have the ability to save searches? Absolutely. So anytime you create a search and you think, you know what, this is a great search, I'm going to be able to use this again, let me pull up that search I just created. When you hit that search button and you're looking at your results list, this favorites option is going to allow you to do just that, where you'll see a blue save this search button. That blinking cursor is very tempting, but hit save this search first, and then you can label out what is this search providing me, okay, HTML candidates near Boston as an example. And then that way all you have to do is run that favorite to recreate that search. Great, thank you. Uh, we had a question from Rob asking, does FastFind work with hyphenated names? Uh, whatever the name may be, as long as you're entering in those values, absolutely. So as long as it's identified as in the profile, you can start typing it in. I don't think I have any examples in front of me. But yeah, utilize that search, pull up the names, and you should see it in your results. Great. A uh, question came in from uh, Samruti asking, it looks like the candidate records that you pulled up had different phone number formats. It had the CMP, which I believe is uh, company and personal phone numbers. On their candidate mm -hmm. records, they see an M. I'm guessing that means mobile. Is there a way to add different types of phone numbers into that candidate search or a candidate record? So in the candidate record, yes, there is uh, an option there. As long as you have those fields available, typically there is a, like a primary phone and a mobile phone. You're going to find it in the contact section if you hit the edit tab of the candidate's profile. And then those also too, if you're populating both those values, could be added as columns in your list as well. Great. A question came in from Alyssa asking, how do I make sure that my keywords are being highlighted? So 
To make sure your keywords are being highlighted, you would want to use this checkbox to only search description because that magnifying glass I hovered over, well, I have that checkbox selected, so now it's telling me they are looking at the resumes. But in that magnifying glass, it's looking at more areas than just the resume. So you want to make sure that only search description is, checkbox, is selected so it's only looking at the resume because if you don't use that checkbox, again, it's looking at other areas. And if you don't see the keyword highlighted, well, it may have found that keyword in one of those other areas. So use that only search description checkbox. Okay, looks like we have time for one more question. Uh, Bonnie asked, does Boolean search support parentheses? Yeah, so the Boolean search, absolutely. We're going to be sending you an article on all, in regards to all of the Boolean functionality, but it does allow you to use the quotations. If it's a multi-word keyword, um, you can use the characters. So you, there's a lot of flexibility into those advanced search criteria. Great. Thank you, Terry, and thank you all for attending today's webinar. You will receive a copy of the recording within the next 24 hours. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.